Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Meenal Dhal from Department of Anthropology, University of Delhi. Today we will discuss about the module Ecological Rules and Their Application to Human Population from the paper Ecological Anthropology, Cultural and Biological Dimension. This module covers the various uh, learning objectives which include to study the different ecological rules and to study the application of different ecological rules in relation to human population. So before going into detail of the ecological rules, one should know about the concept of ecology. Now what is ecology? It is the scientific study of the interaction between organism and their surrounding environment. It largely include the study of communications of the organism which they have with each other or similar species or with other organism and their relationship with abiotic component of the environment. Ecology has been a focus for the human race or ethnic group for as long as we existed, existed as a species. Our survival and environmental adaptation dependent upon how well we could analyze and observe the variation in the surrounding milieu and predict the responses of various organisms to those variations. Earliest human hunter and gatherers have to know about the habitat of their prey and where to find the food plants in seasonal variations. Later, Farmers had to be aware of the variation in weather and surrounding abiotic conditions and their effect on crop, plant and livestock for better yields. An ecologist studies the diversity, distribution, population of particular organism, cooperation and competition between the organisms within an ecosystem and among different ecosystems. The ecological measurements also include study of physiological and anatomical differences among the species with the change of climatic condition like temperature and geographical variation. Now what is ecological organization? Ecosystems can be studied at organizational arrangement or on the basis of stratification. The levels of organization can be described from the smallest to the largest as you can show in the, show in the figure. The first level or the lowest level is species. A species is a group of individual in which two individual or distinct gender that is male and female are capable of reproducing a fertile or offspring through reproduction. The second level is population. A population is a group of organism of the same species or individual living in a particular geographical area. Another level is population. A population is a group of organism of the same species or individual living in a particular geographical area with the capability of interbreeding. The third level is community. All organism or a social unit living in a given geographical area which shares the common values. The another level is ecosystem. It is a community of organism living in a conjunction with non-living components of the particular environment which include air, water, soil and interacting as a system. The another level include biomes a large naturally occurring community of flora and fauna occupying a major habitat adapting to their environment and the higher level include the biosphere. This is where all living things on earth live. The biosphere is the biological component of earth system include lithosphere, hydrosphere and atmosphere. Now, after getting information about this biological thing, we will ecological concept will start with the ecological rules. Now, what is ecological rules? 
several ecologists has tried to explain the interaction between organism and their environment in a different perspective of analysis. In this section, we have mentioned some major concepts which laid the foundation of close observation of environment and the impact of environment on the living organism residing in the milieu. Now the first ecological rule is Ellen's rule. Heat loss is a major problem for animal residing in cold climatic condition. Most of the body heat is lost near the surface or skin. Therefore, the lesser the surface area of a body relative to its total size, it will lose less heat from its surface and vice versa. In all of the geometrical forms, the one with least surface area relative to its total size or unit volume is basically a sphere. So the people living in colder climatic condition will find certain advantages for being short and thick with which is essentially the case for different living species like walruses, snowshoe, hares and Eskimos. Joe Lassif Allen, an American biologist in 1877 put forward the Allen's rule. According to this rule, the body shapes and proportion of endotherms vary by climatic temperature so by either minimizing the exposed surface area to minimize the heat loss in the colder places or by maximizing the exposed surface area to maximize the heat loss in hot climatic condition. In endothermic animals from hot climates usually have long and thin ears, tails, limbs, snout etc. Whereas equivalent endotherms from colder climate usually have shorter and thicker ears, tails and limbs. Now how this rule hold true with the modern human as it is applicable to the animals? Allen's rule in practice can be found with Eskimos who have stockier body build and shorter limbs in comparison to East African tribes like Maasai who have long and linear body build. In Peru, individuals of the same population who lived at higher altitude tended to have shorter limbs whereas those who inhabited more low-lying coastal areas generally had longer limbs and larger trunks. Another scholar similarly noted that the indigenous human population living in colder regions have proportionally shorter legs and people who have their origin in the hotter region have proportionally longer legs for their height. Now you can also see the picture shown with the Eskimos. Now how this rule holds for animals? The black-tailed jackrabbit, an inhabitant of hot arid areas, always have longer legs, long ears and a long head while the arctic hare ears are much shorter relative to their head size and head is more spherical besides being long. The polar bear has always stocky bear limbs and short ears that can also be correlated with the Allen's rule. The figure shows Arctic rabbit and black-tailed jackrabbit. Another ecological rule is Bergman's rule. This rule was named after the German biologist Karl Bergman who described the physiological differences in organism according to their climatic condition in 1847. According to Bergman's rule, the geographic races of a species or ethnic groups of a species possessing smaller body size are found in the warmer region and ethnic group of larger body size are found in cooler region. The endothermic animals like bird and mammals of colder areas are found to have less surface area volume ratio that is heavier build body as compared with the warmer areas. Evidence to support the rule can be found in polar bears who are much larger size than the 
expectorated bears live, living closer to the equator. Another example can be cited for penguins. Penguins living in arctic areas are generally 1 meter long in length as compared to the 0.5 meter long penguins of Galapagos Island. Now Bergman's principle in human how it apply. Human population living near the arctic pole like Inuit, Sami people are on average heavier than population from mid altitude is consistent with the Bergman's rule. They also tend to have shorter limbs and trunks which validate the Allen's rule. Now Marshall T. Newman in his report in the Journal of American Anthropologists in 1953 mentioned that Native American population are generally consistent with Bergman's rule and he also added that population of Eurasia also hold with the Bergman's rule. Now we'll talk about the third ecological rule called as Gauss's hypothesis or Gauss's law hypothesis which is often referred to as competitive exclusion principle. According to the law, two species competing for the same resource cannot coexist at constant population values. If other ecological factors remain constant or in a simpler term when two competing species attempting to occupy the same night, only one outcome is possible and one species will drive out to the other place. When one species gain even the slightest advantage over the other species, one will overcome the other leading to either the extinction of this competitor or develop an evolutionary or behavioral shift towards a different ecological line. Therefore, the principle can be proposed into complete competitors cannot coexist. If we had explained this with an example, here in, the, in this figure you can see in stage 1 a smaller yellow bird species which is native to the place are foraging for insects across the whole tree. In stage 2 a large invasive red bird species were introduced into the environment and competes with the yellow bird species for resources. As time passes the invasive larger red species dominates over the yellow species in competition for the middle part of the tree and for more abundant food resources. In third stage, the yellow bird species then adapt to the new Nike and both birds thrive without competition. For example, red squirrel is a native bird of Britain but its population was consequently decreasing for competitive exclusion, disease and disappearance of conifer forests in low land Britain which were their native habitat. In 1876 to 1929, grey squirrel was introduced in 30 different sites of low land Britain and it has been observed that with few years the grey squirrel overlooked the red squirrel by adapting to the park and garden environment. Here in this figure you can see yellow and red bird relationship for competitive exclusion principle. Now another ecological rule is Glodger's rule. This rule was remarked after the name of the zoologist Constantin William Lambert Glodger who put forward the rule in the year 1833 based on co-variation of climate and avian plumage color. According to this rule, Skin pigmentation is higher in animals living in warm and humid habitats in comparison to animals living in cold and dry places. During this study, Glodger found that birds in more humid habitats are darker than their relative livings in the regions with higher aridity. More than 90% of 52 North American bird species has been observed to confirm this rule. For example, the song sparrow living in high humid regions shows darkly colored wings and furs comparison to pale colored living in low humid regions. Edward H. Burritt in a report in 2004 suggested that dark colored feathers are 
also resistant to bacterial degradation which is a major problem in humid habitats as bacteria thrives less in arid habitats. The figure also shows the song sparrow feather color differentiation from the arid to the humid range of the sparrow. Now Glodger rules in human how it applicable mammalian species including human also showed the tendency to have the darker skin color living in equatorial or tropical region. This can be explained in terms of better adaptation against the excessive solar ultraviolet radiation at lower latitude. Some expectations have been observed among Tibetans who have darker skin color living in the colder region and in their native latitude far away from the equator. This is apparently an adaptation towards the extremely high UV radiation due to ice crystal on the Tibetan plateau. The figure also shows that Tibetan boy where the distribution of skin pigment in human how it distinguish. Now we will talk about the another rule called as Jordan's rule. According to Jordan's rule the number of marine fish vertebrates increases along a gradient from the tropics to cooler water at higher latitudes. This law is widely attributed to ambient temperatures during ontogeny of individual vertebral fishes. Other aspects of fish development and ecology like fish size, phyletic position, body shape, swimming mode are also found in corroborating with this law. The number of vertebrates is a meristic character widely used in fish taxonomy and diversity studies. Another law or rule is Lindemann's law of tropical level. Lindemann's law is generally known as 10% law. It was introduced by Raymond Lindemann in 1942. According to this rule, only 10% of the total energy from organic food transfer from one tropical level to the next. The remaining energy is used by the organism to regulate their metabolic processes. The plant absorb 1% of the sun energy for primary production and 10% of the energy is stored by the plant as net production available for the herbivores. When the plants are consumed by the herbivores of the 10% of the energy in the food is fixed into the animals and when the herbivores are consumed by a carnivores of next tropical level only 10% of the net production will be transferred. This law has been considered as a primitive and obsolete and regarded as a myth in the ecological rules. Few scholars summarized many studies with a fairly wide range of values from a few percentage to the 20 percentage. Another law is called as Shelford's law of tolerance. Growth and development of our organism may be limited not only by too little of an element or too low of an environmental factor but also by too much of that element in high intensity. For example, carbon dioxide is necessary for the growth of all the green plants and a small increase in the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere will increase the rate of plant growth under certain circumstances, but considerable increase in the concentration of carbon dioxide decreases the water use and lowered tissue concentration of nitrogen and protein which will impact the agricultural production and yield. The idea that an environmental factor could be limiting at their maximum and minimum quantities was incorporated by V. E. Shelford in 1911 and Shelford's Law of Tolerance. It states that an organism's success of survival is based on a complex set of condition and each organism has certain minimum and maximum limiting effects for ecological factors and between maximum and minimum lies a range of gradient that is known as the limit of tolerance or optimum environmental ecological factor. 
Here you can see the graphical illustration of law of tolerance. The maximum and minimum limit of tolerance are intensity level of a factor at which only half of the organism can survive. These limits are sometimes difficult to define as for example with low temperature organisms may pass into an inactive dormant or hibernating state from which they may again gain the functional state when the temperature rises above a threshold at the high temperature. There may be similar inactivation before the lethal level is attained even though without dormancy occurring there are normally zones of physiological stresses before the limits of tolerance are reached. The species as a whole is limiting in its activities more by condition that produce physiological discomforts or stresses then it is the limit of tolerance themselves. The death verges on the limits of tolerance and the existence of the species would be seriously endangered if it is frequently exposed to these extreme conditions. So, there are various laws and ecological rules we studied till now. To conclude this module, we, would, we should have understanding of these ecological rules which help us to understand the concept of adaptation at different ecozones and how populations survive in extreme environments. Allen's and Bergman's rule play important role in understanding different ecological setups. Gauze's hypothesis also refer to the competitive exclusion principle where two species have to compete for the survival. Similarly, other ecological rules also helps us, helps an anthropologist to understand human population better in different environmental conditions. They, these, all these components or ecological rules are derived from or applicable on the animals, but they were also applicable among humans. Thank you.